Hello, today we're in the West Midlands of England in Worcestershire, the home of Lee and Perrins. We're going to see how they make their famous Worcestershire sauce. Today we're going to find out about its history and origin, what makes it so popular here in the UK, and then of course we're going to taste it. Worcestershire sauce is a condiment made through a long-established maturing process with malt and spirit vinegar, molasses, red onions, garlic, anchovies, tamarind and secret seasoning. The sauce can be enjoyed in a variety of ways, used to complement steaks, burgers, cocktails such as a Bloody Mary and a British favourite, cheese on toast. But how did this famous sauce come into existence here in the West Midlands? So Liam Perrins is steeped in over 180 years of history. You know, the story starts uh, in 1835 with Lord Sandys, who was uh, reputedly a nobleman of this county, and he'd been travelling in the Far East and had picked up this recipe for a sauce. And he loved it so much, he brought it back to Worcester and wanted it made up. He turned to uh, a couple of entrepreneur chemists, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins, who owned a chemist shop in the centre of Worcester in Broad Street. Uh, so he gave them the recipe. Uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins got the ingredients from around the world and made up the sauce. And you know what? It tasted awful. Lord Sandy's never returned. And Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins put this uh, mixture in the basement of their chemist shop and didn't return to it until a couple of years afterwards when they tried it and it had matured into this wonderful elixir and so started the kind of global fame of Lee and Perrins into what it is today. After discovering their newfound popular sauce, the pair began selling it from their Broad Street chemist, which was quickly becoming popular with locals in the area. Liam Perrins then relocated to a new factory in Worcester in 1897, where the sauce is still made today. Depending on your region, it will either be packaged in the iconic orange label or wrapped in a beige paper wrapper. So at the soil here in Worcester, we do mainly Liam Perrins production in glass bottles. 70-80% um, uh, of what we do is Liam Perrins, so quite a lot of volume. And also we'll produce around about 43 million bottles a year. So depending on the bottle size that we're running at the time, we can run anything from two and a half tonnes an hour up to five and six tonnes per hour in terms of productive source. Paul escorted us around the factory, showing us the making process. We started in the basement, where hundreds of barrels sit quietly maturing the Worcestershire sauce ingredients, just like it did over a hundred years ago. Paul starts by showing us one of the three main ingredients that go into Lee and Perrin's sauce, whole red onions. So we got some red onions here that have been pickling for around about nine to 10 months. And we've still got the whole red skin onion, which we noticed, but it's changed from being a very hard fruit, even though it's keeping its color, to being a little bit mushy. And it's the process of breaking down the vegetable that creates this lovely juice that comes out that will give us that lovely flavor. The same process is also done with whole garlic cloves, which also sit in a barrel of malt vinegar to pickle for 18 months. One of the most interesting ingredients sitting in these barrels are anchovies, and there are lots of them. The fish, which are captured and sent from Spain, age in 200 kilograms of salt for two years, which help bring out the base flavor for the sauce. After the ingredients have finished maturing, they then go to the making house, where they are mixed together. The garlic, onions, anchovies and salt are added into this 5,000 liter tank. Mm -hmm. 
It then goes to the maturation storage area, where the ingredients are transferred and held in a larger 30,000 litre tank for a minimum of six weeks, adding more ingredients, including their secret spices, further enhancing the maturing process. Once complete, the sauce then goes to the final stage where it gets pasteurized. The sauce first goes through this holding tank before heading to the heat exchanger, which preheats the sauce for around two minutes, then cools it again before sending it to bottling. It's finally time to try the Worcestershire sauce. One thing to keep in mind is that this sauce is basically everything that I hate. I'm not a big fan of vinegar, anchovies, uh, garlic, onions, and all these strong, strong flavors. I think the winning point in here is that you don't taste the fish. I could never tell that there is fish in here. I can taste the vinegar and the garlic and the onions. You know, like if you compare this to like the, the standard vinegar that you have on the market, this will taste more like a balsamic vinegar because it has some sweet notes. I have made a very sad looking cheese on toast. So what we've done here is we put a little bit of the Lee and Perrin's sauce uh, just on top of the cheese before uh, putting this onto the grill. Oh yeah, there is sauce in here. <laughs> I think this one is a very, a very good option. The sauce actually elevates it. So overall, not for me, but it's still a great sauce.